20 years ago, I fell in love with the love of my life. And I was working on an album, and it was called This Is Me Then. And it was all about capturing that moment in time. Yeah. I said, now the most amazing, incredible, unbelievable thing has happened. And the reason we're here is because I want to capture this moment in time. Because it is even better than the first time. Truthful albums about true love are hard. Hard to create, and if I'm being honest, sometimes hard to listen to. Which is why, even as fans, we can be cynical, dismissive when presented with true love on the record. But here's the thing, opinions change, music lasts forever, and sometimes even love can be everlasting. This conversation is about a true love story in two parts, then and now, with Jennifer Lopez. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. I always love sitting down talking with you. Yeah, you too. And it's not like I haven't been asking. I mean, I've been bold, like very bold about it. Like, I think the last time we spoke virtually, I was like, so when are we going to be face to face and have a conversation? Like, right. I literally invited and myself. And have the thing, like yeah. the long thing. And I was like, when I make new music, we'll do it. So. Oh, wow. We're going to get to that. Um, yes. But yeah. the reason that we um, are having this conversation to start with is one of the weirdest reasons <laughs> ever. Let me break it down. So in 2002, <laughs> so weird. In 2002, you made a timeless, modern, almost classic sounding R&B record. Yeah. You know, it had very pop orientated, but yes. whole timeless R&B touchstones. And you called it, this is me then. And it was almost like you knew in 20 years time, you could look back on yourself in that moment and reflect on the life that you were living. Here's where it gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> that album was written and inspired by somebody you d fell deeply in love with. Yeah, it's true. And then here we are 20 years later reflecting on then, now, with the same person that you were once again. I know. <laughs> it's like, what are we, in the twilight zone? <laughs> you know, it is a little bit like the twilight yeah. zone. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And, you know, that album, This Is Me Then, really captured a moment in time where I fell in love with the love of my life. Yeah. And I just... It's all right there on the record. And I didn't even realize what was happening and what I was doing. You just got out of the way. You know, it was just every day going from the set to the recording studio, yeah. doing the thing, being in love, you know, him coming into the studio, you know, Corey writing this, rec you know, I'm glad and going, ah, this reminds me of, you know what I mean? And, we, as, you know, yeah. me tweaking the lyrics with him, like every single song that we wrote there, me writing Dear Ben. And yeah. It, it was such a special moment in time to have captured. And it's funny because I was going to call the record Jenny from the Block, mm. you know, because that song is on there. And it made sense because you were coming off the back of self-titled. Right. right. You know, J-Lo, exactly. you know, it was just like, but I'm still Jenny. And I mean, I'm J-Lo now, but no, I'm still Jenny from the Block. Exactly. But it didn't feel right. I remember having this conversation with Ben and we were doing Jersey Girl, mm. a movie that we did a long time ago in Philadelphia. And, uh, and I said, I remember the apartment, I remember the conversation, and he was, I was like, I, I just don't know what to name this album. I just can't, like, nail it. I, like, the songs are not the thing. There's no title track. It's like, and he was like, well, this is you right now. Like, everything that you're writing on this record that I've been seeing is, this is like, this is you in this record, like, this moment. He was like, when you look back on the record, yeah. It'll be like, that was me then. <laughs> Dang. And I was like, it would be Almost then. Almost a script writer. This is me yeah. then. Right. This is me at that moment. Yeah. So I decided to call it, oh, okay, this is me then. This moment in time was captured of finding your kind of soulmate in that time. And, and, it, and it's all there. And when I listen there. to the lyrics now... I didn't even realize I was writing some of our story that would happen, yeah. which was sick, yeah. like still, yeah. and some of the records on there, which were more obvious about Ben, but even records that you were like, well, that's kind of a breakup record, and 
Like, I didn't even realize that it was kind of prophetic in a weird way. It is. And when you listen to it, it's crazy like that. And you, and it's, it's fun. When you go through a situation as an artist, you have this opportunity to express yourself through the art of what's going on in your life. If you get to the most personal places, it becomes this beautiful, magical moment. Yeah. Now, most artists are open to that heartbreak being the obvious place where you're totally willing to go. Yeah. Love, especially big love yeah is not often so overtly presented in such a celebratory way <laughs> no i mean it was unique in that regard yeah. that album yeah here's the thing i think you you said something really profound there a lot of artists feel um i think or my experience with artists other artists is that when they're suffering when they're in pain yeah they come out with this really crazy yeah. art yeah for me it's the total opposite right when i'm in love is when i'm inspired Wow. the most Sweet. and I was the most inspired then and I have not made another record like that since then so where does the pain go uh the pain for me um was always private mm. very private very kind of like a part of myself that I've would hide from the world always because I felt like it was always about being my best self um, being honest, being kind, putting my best foot forward. This is show business. You put up the smile, you do the dance, you do the, you know, the performance. But you're also a very giving artist. It makes sense. The music that you share is on an energy level. You seem dedicated to promoting positive energy. Yeah. It's all about love for me. Yeah. There is nothing really that I like to sing about that doesn't have to do with love or relationships or trying to figure that out. That's why Love Question Mark was so heartbreaking. Love Question Mark was... <laughs> That's like, oh dear. <laughs> the world's biggest romantic yeah. is struggling with the thing that with, inspires her the most. Yeah. And that was a hard time in my life. Yeah. And I think when people really look at the things that I chosen to do at different times and it is very telling. Yeah, and I've, I've always been kind of that way, that I have to do things that really resonate with me or it just doesn't feel right. I can't fake certain things. Like I'm an actress yeah. and I'm uh, good at that. <laughs> you know, I love making movies, mm. but I'm not good at being fake at all. But then there was this side of me that, like you said, where did the pain go? I was in so much pain for so many years. And I just had to survive in a way. And my way of surviving was by working more and doing more and hiding that side of myself. Because the art won't let I you. I had to do it. The music won't let you hide. No. That's and so the I didn't thing. make music See, that's why in this, that way that's why that's my music. That I did in 2002 yeah. until now. Like anniversaries come and go. <laughs> and the one thing about the music business is we love an anniversary. We love an anniversary. Right? Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Anniversary time, 20 years, big record. 20 years, right? November 25th. That's right. And so can you imagine how it would be and feel to reflect on this album if there was no happy ending? It would feel so strange because you... Okay, this is me looking at me then. Dude, I wouldn't even perform these records. Yeah, you didn't even tour it. It was so painful after Cause it didn't work we out. broke up. Because it didn't work out. Yeah, once we on called off that wedding 20 years ago, I was... It was the biggest heartbreak of my life. And I honestly felt like I was going to die. And it sent me on a spiral for the next 18 years where I just was, you know, couldn't get it right. Couldn't get it right. But now, now, 20 years later, it does have a happy ending. It does. Which is crazy. <laughs> it has the most would never happen in Hollywood ending. There would be like, that would never happen. So we're not going to write that because nobody would believe it. Ending. And, and you can um, listen to this album again and you can actually appreciate it again for what it is, right? Well, yeah. And it's funny because when me and Ben got back together, he said to me, he was like, you never performed the songs. Like you never did I'm Glad. You never did this. You never did that. Did he that. actually say that to you? Yes. He is fishing. <laughs> he is fishing. <laughs> said, Why didn't you uh, perform those yes. songs? Wow. And I was like, you're right. I said, it was painful. It was like, it was a part of me then that I had to put away to kind of move on and survive. It was a, a survival tactic for sure. God, it is the great unrequited love album. Yeah. 
because it's so open and honest. It's the great. You gave everything to that relationship. Young girl in love. Yeah. Hopelessly, devotedly, in love with the person she wants to be with forever. Yeah. And it, it, that type of love that you're not afraid to, you can't hide. You're just like, this is how I feel. This is who I am. I love this person. Yeah. I love him with all my heart and soul. And it was uh, mutual. That leads me to my next question. If it's, it was too painful for you to acknowledge <laughs> yeah. that music. Yeah. It's your decision to leave it all on the table. Mm -hmm. Someone who it's about doesn't really have much of a role in that, right? They, yeah. they, they're the inspiration. They're, they're not the inspiration, the, not the, the muse. creator. Yeah. So he has to live with that album too. Yeah. H has he ever talked about his relationship with that music? I mean, he loves that album. He loves that music. He knows all of the words. You know what I mean? I think like, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. He also was with me while I was creating it. Yeah. You, know, and you know what it is to make an album. You're listening to the, the demos in the car. You're, you're listening to the mixes. You're, I wrote this today. What do you think of this? You know, it was just, it was that over and over and over again yeah. for two years while we were together, two and a half years that we were together. You know, so he, he knows it so well and he loves it so much. <laughs> And he's my biggest fan, which is awesome, and, uh, and supporter. And when he came back into my life, again, the same thing happened, where I felt so inspired and so overtaken with emotion that it was just pouring out of me. And I... So you felt good. I felt... And what I happens when you feel me. good? When I feel, when I feel good, I write music. You write music. <laughs> I write music. And I wrote music and I got in the studio and I think in May and by August when we got married, it was done. Wow. Can we talk about it? Yes, uh, I'd love to. So we, we know that you've remained loyal and faithful to music because throughout your film, career and other opportunities you've contributed your voice and your and your your love yeah. of music to the world it's not yeah. like you haven't made music no 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 we just haven't had an album that has uh, opened up your heart the way that album did no and so when you went back into the studio well let's actually rewind a second how do you know how do you know when you haven't focused on it for so long what does it feel like i was terrified yeah i was like i haven't done this that means you in, had to do it yeah I hadn't done this in 18 years when we first got back together. And I was like, I don't even know if I can do this because I had done my singles and this, you yeah. know, it became a very singles. Also the music business changed, changed during that time too. So it became a very singles driven culture and I do a song here and it a song there. It keeps the candle alive, but it doesn't light the fire. It, it doesn't, doesn't burn. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't inspire anything. It doesn't move people in the same way. You know, it's a moment. Well, Those singles are moments. But you're also an incredibly an album, open person. You know, everything that you do, I feel like you're trying to open up. Yeah. And as much as the world piles pressure on you, yeah. it makes you want to retreat, your instinct is to want to share. My instinct is to, to give my whole heart all yeah. the time. Yeah. And you can't do that with a song. You no. can do a bit of it. You can do a little bit. But you need a body of work. You need a moment in time. And all I said to the producers that I worked with, and it was like four or five of us who worked on this record from top to bottom. Yeah. I was like, 20 years ago, I fell in love with the love of my life. And I was working on an album. And it was called This Is Me Then. And it was all about capturing that moment in time. Yeah. I said, now the most amazing, incredible, unbelievable thing has happened. And the reason we're here is because I want to capture this moment in time because it is even better than the first time. So that's why we're here. And I sat them down and I shared stories with them and we, you know, talked about it. And I, and I was in the studio every single day and every day we wrote one or two songs at least, hmm. maybe sometimes three, a third idea, this or that. And within, like I said, two months we were done with the album. That's a lot of trust. Who are you with? Who are you I with? went in with Roger. Yep. Uh, his team. Mm -hmm. He has uh, Angel Lopez. Yeah. Uh, Giddy. Mm -hmm. Do you know Giddy? Yep. Yep. So it was really the three, the That's, three of them. Yeah. I, I was like, you three have to be here every single day, because 
it is so amazing and we captured it all every day we were filming everything that happened and um and it was ink and myself and stevie mackey mm. and that those were the staples and then we had other amazing people like dougie and cadence and different songwriters come in and out who were awesome yeah um but for the most part that was the crew small crew because it's your story the last time you told this story we've established this was love on full display this is like yeah do with it what you will this I is made, me this is me then. i made this <laughs> then i made this album for yeah. us and whatever you want to do and millions of people responded i mean it was a hugely yeah. successful album so when it came time to writing an album again 2.0 did you feel the same desire to be as open about about your feelings now as you did then or has something changed a little bit it was exactly the same it was really about i think because i went into it with the attitude of like i'm going to capture this moment in time mm -hmm. i'm different than i was 18 20 years ago i'm different than i was 20 years ago i've grown i've learned things i've been through some shit you know i've had some hard times. I've been through divorce. I've been through a lot of different um, difficult relationships at times. And so, and uh, private things that happens, you know, but it got me to this place and it was just about, let's capture who I am right now here today and what I've gone through. And I mean, we have songs on there that are like, talk about what this life is like for me. Whereas Jenny from the block was like me going, I'm still Jenny from the block. I'm, I know I'm famous now and all this, but I'm still Jenny from the block. Well, now was, I'm I talking was, about, yeah. you know, my life is not all hearts and flowers. Like yeah. you thought it may have been. Let me tell you a little bit about what it was like. Yeah. You know, what I made it through and the things that I did. So we captured me yeah. at this moment in time when I was reunited with the love of my life. And we decided we were going to be together forever. And the whole message of the album then is like, this love exists. This is a real love. Now I think what I what the message of the album is very much if you were wondering if you have like me at times lost hope, almost given up, don't. Because true love does exist. And some things do last forever. And that's real. And I want to put that message out into the world. And that it, it does take a lot of vulnerability, um, but I couldn't stop myself. And some uh, parts of it scare me. Mm. And I think parts of it scare Ben too. Mm. <laughs> He's like, oh, do you really want to <laughs> well, because there must say be all this stuff? And I'm like, I, I don't know how else to do it, baby. Because there must be some PTSD from the first time around that lasted even for a period of time, if not today, based on the fact that we're going to share this it's pure, it's real, it's us, it's honest. Why wouldn't you see that? And what we saw in 2002, if you trace back to that moment, it was really like quite an ugly time. Yeah. Because the world, us, all of us, I'm not trying to create hierarchy here, we showed our hand. We showed our hand, we were like, it's too much. We don't yeah. want it, it's too much. Oh, your movie, no, 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 yeah. no. Oh, you're Benefer, you're, you're not two individuals, you're yeah. one collective brand. Joke. Yeah. You're one collective joke. And it was kind of brutal looking back on it now. It, yeah. was, it was brutal. And I don't feel there was actually a case study for that before you two came along. No, it was a new thing. And it was, um, it was very, it destroyed us. That was part of what destroyed us, was the outside energy that was coming at us. And we loved each other. It was hard. It felt at times unfair. But neither one of us is that person to be like, woe is me. So we were like, well, we just got to dust it off and, and keep it moving. And I think in the weirdest way that it motivated both of us to then become and do the things that we wound up doing, mm. which is kind of go into hyper gear. Mm. <laughs> he went into hyper gear and I went into hyper gear. But not together. But not together. We had to do it separately. And he went on to, you know, start directing, win his Oscar, do his, his second Oscar, do his thing, like where people had written him off in a way. The same thing with me. It was just like, 
People are like, she, her music career is over. She's this, she's that. You know what I mean? When I wasn't getting movies. I wasn't, I had to power my way back. I had to work and work and I got divorced and I was like, okay, I'm, I'll do America. I'll do the reality show. I'll do the television show. I'll do the, you know, the single. I'll do this. I'll do, you know, and it was just, okay, I'm going to go on tour for the first time. Mm. Like all these things with two babies, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it was just, it fueled us in a weird way that we felt we had to prove ourselves again. Yeah, but when you have to prove yourself in the face of some kind of exterior motive, the distraction of self-destruction. Yeah. And in your own way, you struggled. Oh, with I struggled work. very much. You know, and in a way you're distracting yourself, but it can become self-destructive. But I feel like without the mistakes, you need the mistakes you need to fall down to pick yourself back up and go, what am I, like for me after my divorce, I was like, what am I doing wrong? Right. I have two babies. <sighs> I'm just trying to make this work as, with all my heart and soul. Like, yeah. what am I doing wrong? What is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. And it made me look at me. That's when the work begins. And that's when the work began, which yeah. was my kids are 14 years old now, yeah. my twins. And it was a journey of 10 years of like figuring myself out and making the same mistakes and doing it again. And okay, okay, I got that piece figured out. But, but, but still, this is not good. Ugh, that, that, this piece now, mm. that piece. And you start putting the pieces together and you start digging deep into yourself until you become whole. You know, well, that's when the self love begins. Yes. Right. We well, put you have a, to learn how to love. You yourself. have to learn how to love yourself. And, and what happens is that we're, we're born and we learn that love has value. So like I, I need to be loved. I'm a kid. I need to be loved. Yeah. So how am I value to this equation? Right. Yeah. And so we put a lot of our own identity in the way people. How our parents love us. Yeah. How they reflect it back on us. Yeah. Let's talk about the work, because when I figured it out around the time of our firstborn, and I went through some deep, deep work because I didn't love myself enough yeah. to be a parent that I wanted to be. Yeah. And it was in the end, I mean, I stand here today and I'm like, I'm so grateful I did the work. But there were <laughs> moments know. where I was like, I can't climb up that hill today. I know. I can't do it. It's too painful. You know what? But I think it's everybody's journey. It's just like the thing I try to, you know, one of my friends just had her husband of you know, I don't know, 30 years just pass, by, uh, pass away. I'm sorry. And she was like, I've been looking at all these old things. She was like, and everything I find of you is like, love myself. You got to love yourself. You got to love, like I was on that journey of s trying to figure out what it was to love yourself. Yeah. Because I knew that I could never really have true love in my life again until I figured that piece out. That is the most important piece. And it took, you know, all these different avenues and different practices and ideas and coaches and all kinds yeah. of, you know, life oh. coaches and therapists yeah. and, and some books and, you know, whatever I could get my hands Wherever on. Wherever there's something that's going to resonate yes. that you can remember. And you have to find yeah, that. You do. You have to find that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start crafting this kind of <laughs> new person. Yeah. I actually yeah. think it's the real person. Yeah. I think it's the real person. You kind of strip away. Yeah, you pull way. away the identity that doesn't translate anymore yeah. to you. And you start to find the person that you are deep down inside. Because, yeah. because well, there's all this tar on top of it. Correct. Like, I used to say, like, you have to pull the tar out. You have to dig into the tar and yeah. kind of pull it out. Because like if you sticky. read something that resonates and it makes you feel something. Yeah. Like, I'll read a quote sometimes if I'm feeling like I need to. Yeah, yeah. To, to find some, some, some repair. Yeah, center yourself. And I get my eyes are water. Yeah. Because it will resonate so deeply with me, just this statement. And I'm like, oh, that actually might be the real me because I felt that yes. so deeply inside yes. that I, I, I actually got something there. Yeah. I found something. 100%. There were so many different places and people that helped me along that journey, but only because I wouldn't stop looking. I knew I needed to be better. And once I had kids, that was a big motivator too. I was like, I gotta be good for these kids. Yeah. I always say that they saved me because I was going in a way where it's just like, I was gonna be doing you know, the destructive relationship thing for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And they made me look and go, okay, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Is this what you wanna model for them? Is this who you wanna be? Mm. 
what are they going to think of this? Got to break the cycle. Yeah, well, what am I going to do? So I really set off on that, that work. Finding who you are. Yeah. You were putting it through your music too. I mean, there was a time around 2002 before and after, I felt like everybody that you had close to you, that you were in love with, was playing a role. Yeah. Was helping you to create this, like someone was exec producing this, someone was involved oh, in yeah. that, doing a tour here. And so it felt like the whole thing was just wrapped up in this search for a deeper identity through love. Yeah. Because it was the one thing I think that I wanted the most. And for whatever reason, whatever my childhood experience was, being the middle child, you right. know, my dad working nights, my mom being a very young mom who was still like a teenager, you know what I mean? Yeah. And wanting that love and stability and family that I could not find. And, and craving it. And craving it so badly that I just would get into things that I'd wonder like, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I with this person? Why am I, why am I allowing certain things, you know? And and until you really start, like you say, loving yourself and figuring out, like, wait, wait, I'm not, would I treat my kids like this? Yeah. Would I treat my friend like this? Yeah. Well, what, what advice would I give my sister right now? Yeah, why can't I give it to myself? What am I doing? Yeah. Like, I'm, you're, you're the smart one here. <laughs> you're supposed to be, you're the smart, successful one. What are you doing? Because success isn't necessarily, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. You're just a that's human being. That's the distraction. Being. And that's why yeah. I think for me, the music is so important because the way that I express myself on the most visceral level and the most honest way is through the music and through performing. I think when I'm on stage in front of people, it's when I feel the most me. The God, me. it must have been a strange eight years without that opportunity to express yourself like that. Yeah. And I know you, as we've established, you're doing other work. Yeah. But you get to step away from that craziness of music where it's so personal to do the personal work. Yeah. But still, the feeling of going back in that room. Oh yeah. And just knowing I've got something to say again. I remember the first time in oh, so wow. long it I had emotional. so- It was Every day was emotional, yeah. every moment but it was filled and fueled with so much joy and <laughs> happiness. Like every day I was like, I'm gonna write another yeah. song for this yeah. man right now, I'm gonna do it. But that's what I wanted to do. The feeling was so bursting out of me that I just wanted to put it somewhere. Yeah. I wanted to put it somewhere and I did. And I was just like, oh my God. And I just, again, you feel always afraid when you put your whole self and your whole heart into something. You never know how people are gonna receive it. But here's the difference. The difference is in 2022, no matter what the world throws at you to, it's not gonna it's change true. anything this time. No. And so the music finally has a creator that's gonna back it and yeah. be like, I'm touring it. I don't yeah, care I'm doing what this. you think. We're doing, this time we're doing We're doing this. it, you we're know. We're doing this. And the first time I ever saw my wife, I, I know what love at first sight is, I totally do. It yeah. was, she was in a kitchen, we were teenagers, and the, and the galley door of my friend's uh, kitchen, parents' kitchen opened up and I saw her and it swung back. And in that moment that it opened up like that, I was in. That was it. It took her 10 years to figure it out, but I was in. <laughs> but you were there. I was in. Which sounds creepy, I didn't like stick around for 10 years. I mean, we lived our <laughs> lives, but we, we have a miniature Jennifer Ben thing going on here. <laughs> It took us 10 years. I get it, I get um, it. So I'm gonna ask you this because I shared you mine and I think it's a nice way to, to, to get, get back into then. What did it feel like the first time you saw him? Was it love at first sight? That's Do you remember? Funny. I, you know, I was with somebody when I met him, so that thing didn't happen. Mm. I think what happened is as we worked together, we became such good friends. We realized that we were crazy about each other. I found myself, you know, kind of, you know, thinking about him after the movie was over, mm. you know, and having to take care of my own business because I was coming out of a relationship at that time. And but it's like you just knew it's just like this is the person I want to be with. And that happened over a period of months. You know, it wasn't an instant thing because we weren't allowed to do that yeah i think yeah we weren't in that place where we were like both single and was like okay yeah yeah it's simmering yeah it kind of grew over time i think about the sound of this album of then then and i think about um i think about where you were coming from you were coming 
out of these first two albums. A lot of tempo, a lot of attitude, a lot yeah. of vibe. Yeah. Real New Yorkian revolution yeah. going on. <laughs> Pun. Yes. Joe. Yeah. Nori. Yeah. You. Mm -hmm. I mean, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Let's go. We were in the house, at you that, were in the but, house. as they said it, back in the 100%. day. We were in the motherfucking house. And you were, yeah. you were definitely establishing a new world order for the music and for the culture. Mm -hmm. um, and then this album comes out and it's like I said, you're drawing on Stevie and Marvin and yeah. like Aretha and things that just feel very timeless. And even the way you enunciated, like if you listen back to your performance on this album, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, would you mind? Like you're enunciating yeah. like a classic soul singer. Yeah. You're not rolling your words like it's yeah, like, like just, pop music or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like being slangy and yeah. then kind of streety, guttery. Do you know it what I mean? Like, yeah, I totally know what you mean. I was very influenced at that time by, uh, first of all, Corey Rooney was my partner in that, whereas Roger was my partner now um, and the guys there. But it was just me and Corey and we wound up, you know, again, just me and him in the studio, different people would come in and out. Yeah. But, you know, he was, you know, he could, he sings like Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Corey Rooney, but, you oh, know, yeah. you know, whenever we have ideas and stuff, it's just at the piano, sing a little bit. I have an idea. I want to write something about this. Yeah. And, or he'd come in and he'd be like, on the way in, in the car, I was writing this down on the napkin, you know, and that's how I'm glad was written. And, you know, uh, different things like that. It was just his influences and my influence and because we were kind of the same age and our parents had listened to all that 70s soul music you know yeah. um that was very much a part of who and the, the 80s kind of like you know let's groove tonight and earth wind and fire and the all M2 those may people be, and M2 the little may juicy, yeah, all yeah. those things those yeah. records yeah because that was the cool music for me when I was growing up, 80s, Rapper's Delight, all that kind of stuff. Like, those things were so much a part of, like, again, Jenny from the block. Yeah. You know, and then it was like, but how do we take it from, like you said, what the first two albums were to elevate it to something else? And that's when I bought in Bruce Swedeen and we started using more live instruments, mm. live strings. You know, we still had all the other kind of drums and things going on, but and we get tracks from other, you know, producers and stuff, but really much like This Is Me Now, uh, and This Is Me Now was even a, a further kind of step up in that sense because we created it Did you it just tell me the, the name room. of the album? <laughs> I did. did. you just tell me the name yeah. of the album? Yes. Is that the name of the album? <laughs> yes, and This Is Me Now. Well, I, need, I wish I had Wi-Fi so I could hit the air horn button on my phone. <laughs> Don't you love it when a plan comes together? I didn't even have to fish for that one. That yeah. just landed on the plate. I know. It's, I know. Well, it's called This Is Me Now. Are you kidding me? Yeah, This Is Me Now. I'm sorry. It's called This Is Me Now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. So in 2002, it was called This Is Me Then, and you've called it This Is Me Now. Perfect. Yeah. It is perfect. It's perfect. Like you thought in 20 years' time, you'd look back on, oh, man, then. Like, yeah. no, no, no. Now is what matters. Isn't that the great lesson? It the is. moment is the only thing that truly matters. That's the only thing. And when... I think now that we're older, we realize like it's much more clear. Because even in then when we felt that way, now we know. Now we know. And there's no questions. And there is no kind of like, well, let's see how this goes. It's like, nope. It's me and you. That's it. All the way. Till the end. That's it. It's going to be us. Was it quick? When you, when you came together again and realized that the love was still... Immediate. immediate. That, was the, that was the immediate. That was the immediate. We're not wasting any more time. We're not. We're not. We knew. We had our kids and we had to, you know, tread lightly and carefully so they could come along with us because they, they didn't live the, those years they're before. They're like our crazy parents, They're like, man. who are these two? They're you like know what I mean? <laughs> and they're like, wow, yeah. like, they've known each other forever. And yeah. that's it. We did know each other forever. And we... Uh, you know, had to live these separate paths and we did other beautiful things and we had these amazing children. Uh, but when we came back together and, and the universe and God and uh, as it would have it, once we got whole enough and complete enough and loved ourselves enough and could stand on our own two feet really completely, as the universe would have it, we were bought into each other's lives again. And 
it was like a, a, a crack in the clouds and the sun came through and it was like, boom, that's it. And we were both very sure, very sure. And I, I mean, I remember <laughs> and one, of, one of the songs that I wrote for the album, um, which is on the inside of this ring right here, my engagement ring that he gave me, it says not period, going period, anywhere, period. Uh, where in my first diamond ring, he gave me the pink diamond ring, it said sing. And this one he put not period, going period, anywhere period, because that's how he would sign his emails when we started talking again. Like, don't worry, don't worry, wow. I'm not going anywhere. Wow. And I wrote that We're song. We're closing the gates on the world. <laughs> like, we are making this decision, yeah. right? Yeah. Here's the statement. We're going to put this right. Yeah. And have you noticed something really amazing? I have. Not that I'm really in the headlines much. I, I don't really read much. I don't really catch up on much. Yeah. And times have changed. Mm -hmm. It's a business now. It yeah. was just out of, can I swear? Are you okay yes. with that? It was out of fucking control yeah. in the beginning of 2000s. Uh, I mean, it was feral. Yeah. Now it's a business. Yep. But have you noticed that it's cool? Everyone's like, oh, well, maybe we should just leave them alone yeah, this time. Yeah. Have you noticed yeah. that, like, fall yeah, back? it was funny. Fall back. Yeah, fall back, just let them do their thing. Just let them yeah. do their thing. It's funny, when we first got together, there was this, like, kind of big, like, oh, my God, they're back together. We love it, we yeah. love it. And we were both like, oh, funny that. Really? Where, you, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, thanks. We love, we, we really love that. <laughs> But it really, like, there was real love for it. Yeah. You know, it just was overwhelming. Yeah. By the way, for us too. Yeah. And for everybody. Yeah. And I get it. Because happy endings exist and we need them. Yeah. And, and it's nice to know they're not just in the movies. No, you, you have can given... get a second chance if you do the work. If you do the work. If you do the work and you don't give up, you can get there to somewhere amazing and beautiful and blessed. And that's how I feel. And because of that, I just, I mean, as an artist, that's just the only reason I'm here is to share what I know and what I learn and what I go through. And if, when I can do, be inspired to do that in the most honest way, I think that's when I fulfill my own purpose. Yeah, because you haven't done it until now. That's how honest you are. Yeah. It's like, there are no happy endings until there's a happy <laughs> ending. Happy end now I can say, guys, and by the way, you've earned the happy ending. I mean, you have given the world through cinema many happy endings. Yes. And it was becoming like almost brutal. It was brutal. In, in every movie, I it's like, here she tweet. is with the happy ending. And yes, in real life, it's like, oh my and God. No, I, I remember some tweet I saw that made me laugh so hard. And it was like, all I want is what everybody wants. World peace and for J-Lo to find <laughs> true love. <laughs> and, I, and this was years ago. This was like four or five years ago. Yeah. And I was just like, this is funny. I was like, these people, because I feel like what I've done over the years is I've, I've shown you my heart. Yeah. I've shown you my heart, and I'm not ashamed of that. And I know that I've made mistakes, and I know that I've been through rough shit, and I know that you, you kind of peeped me. You know, you knew that. And yeah. you allowed me to stay gracious in the public eye and let me grow into the woman that I am and find my way. And you saw me trying and you saw me not giving up and you saw me working hard and you saw me trying better and growing and making my mark and making my moments and showing the performer I was and showing the actor I was and showing the woman I was and the mother I was and the person I was and the friend that I could be to you. Mm. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And I love that. And I think that's why it is my responsibility to share whatever it is in, in, in that most open way. And that's not easy. I read the Vogue article, it was beautifully written and it was, it was really, it was a lovely, it was just a, a proper amazing legacy piece of journalism, you know, that summed everything up. And it talked about 1920 and this, this great return and it talked about Versace and it talked about the mm -hmm. films and the oh, tour yeah, yeah, yeah. and it talked about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. You know, obviously the Super Bowl comes and goes every year. Mm -hmm. What was that? Well, I've never spoken to you about it. I spoke to you before, I speak mm -hmm. to you after. Mm -hmm. What's it really like doing a halftime show? It's hard. It's, it's a lot of stress. And any artist who does it feels it. I remember somebody I know who was a manager who worked with an artist who did it years ago, legendary artist, was like, that was the only time that I quit. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and they were still with that person. Yeah. And uh, because it is not easy. 
in the sense that it is the biggest show on earth. Yeah. It is the most watched For the shortest amount of time. entertainment show on earth. Everybody's tuned in. And you in. can't even get your feet wet. No. You gotta dive straight in. You got to jump in. Yeah. And I mean I did the you know, the documentary Halftime yeah. is was about that in, in a lot of ways. It was me, you know, at a kind of pivotal birthday in my life, halftime of what I feel my life is and at the same time, you know, putting together this show that had so much meaning and I had to find a way to kind of put all the things that were most important to me to show who I was. Mm. Like I was an opportunity Which for people who never knew me. And that's or a never lot. saw me. Yeah. To say, oh, that's that's who's who's if they just were like, who's Jennifer Lopez? Who's J Lo? Let, who is that? I had to be like, this is who I am. I am a woman on top of the Empire State Building saying, <laughs> and I am Jenny from the block, and I am a Latina, and I am a mother, and this is who I am. And a survivor. Yeah. And I I wanted to put all of those things in there, and I am, you know. I'm a mother and I'm sexy and I'm, you know, uh, tough and I am vulnerable. You know what I mean? It, you're really trying for me. I was really just trying to to also make my community proud. That was a big part of it for me. Being Puerto Rican, being from the Bronx, you know, it's always been a flag that I have held high. Yes. And uh, it was important to me and, and getting to do it with Shakira as well was a beautiful thing because it was like both moms and both Latinas, like not exactly what you would expect at the Super Bowl yeah. <laughs> halftime show. But at a time when the culture and the community that you want to make proud has benefited enormously from artists like Shakira and yourself, paving the way and, and seeing, the, seeing things change in your lifetime now. I mean, it's 2022, timestamp on this, on this conversation, Bad Bunny, was announced as our artist of the year, which is a big deal at Apple. Amazing. Right? He's the number one artist. <laughs> I know. He's the number one artist on the planet. I mean, his planet. numbers are like stratospheric. I know, it's crazy. And he hasn't compromised himself. Nope. Not for a second. Nope. And, and so, that's the new generation. And that's too. the new generation. But, but for you, still being at this point in your life with so much to do, there's so much to say, about to release your first album in how long? I mean, it must be amazing to see the changes and see how the world has responded to the yeah. steps that you and your peers made. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And in that moment, I think I, we felt a huge responsibility. Like, OK, this is what how to show people what Latinos are and to we're beautiful and strong and yeah. and happy. And you know what I mean? And, and you, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like in the country at that time, it was it was a lot going on, which is why I decided to put the cages in there and mm. make that statement. And powerful. And, you know, all of those things. But yes, I mean, with with Bad Bunny seeing now that Spanish music, because I didn't even start in Spanish. music. I always sang English music yeah. and did some Spanish records here and there. But that Spanish music is now, you know, global music is American music. Yeah. Like yeah. with English speaking music yeah. in the weirdest way, you know what I mean? It's, it's so phenomenal and such a change. And I am, it's funny you say that Bad Bunny is, you know, kind of doesn't compromise who he is himself because we grew up in the show business time of like, like, like I said, kind of put your best foot forward. Yeah. But this generation, my kids even inspire me to not shy away from who I really am and how I really feel and what I really want to say. And it's funny. <laughs> This is crazy. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know if I was prepping for a show or doing something. I was at my table with one of my twins and I was playing This Is Me Then. I was playing still. I go, you know, always wondering if my kids like what I do. You know what I mean? Yes, this is so funny because I do the same thing. Yes. I'm always looking at the corner of my eye to see if they're like, reacting they like and they're just like, oh, don't yeah. even look at but, me, dad. Just don't even. But I was playing This Is Me Then. <laughs> I said, you like this song? They were like kind of bopping. I said, do you like this song? And they were like, yeah, I love that song. And I was like, wow. And I played another record, played I'm Glad. And I was kind of like went down the yeah. track list. Yeah. And they stayed there the whole time. They didn't like leave. But they basically said, I like your old music better than your new music. Huh. Huh. Because I had just worked on yeah. some Spanish record that I had just yeah. put out or whatever. Okay. I think I was Cambi El Paso or something yeah, yeah. like that. So yeah. this was, didn't happen long ago. Yeah. And I said, you do? 
Really? Well, it was kind of proud, too, because yeah. I knew I had written all that music, yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, they go, yeah. I said, what's the difference? I'm just wondering with their young ear, like, what do they hear? They go, it was you. It was more you. It feels like you. And that's, I think, when I called Benny and I said, I want to make this record. I know how I want to make it like I did. This is me then. I want to do it. I was like, it's time for me to make another record. Can I make a music observation that, 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 that adds to that, that yeah. personal observation that your mm -hmm. child really generously gave it's you? <laughs> so gift. And by the way, didn't stop thinking about it for weeks that they said that yeah, to me. Because those moments are really important. Like our kids, yeah. the kids don't often volunteer that. It's, no. It, it takes courage to say that to your parents yes. at that moment in time, especially when, you know, it's your art. The music that you've made has, has reflected the search you've been on. Yeah. 100%. That album reflects you were grounded, you wrote the words, you orchestrated and produced the record with your collaborators. It was you stepping in and, and saying, I know what I want to say here and yeah. I don't need anyone overseeing this situation nope. or observing or trying to guide me like a, like a, a star. I'm a writer. I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this. Yeah. I'm going to create this. Yeah. I don't even know what's going to happen. I know that. And, and I think with This Is Me Now, it's funny because Roger and Angel, I don't think they thought I was going to be in the room every single minute, every single day. Right. Like they're used to artists coming in and out and doing this and that. And I was like, whenever we had sessions, that's all I did that day. Yeah. I was just like, we have a session. We start at this time. We're, yeah. we're writing today. We're yeah. writing today. We're writing. We're creating today. And we literally created every song in the room right there. Magic. In other words, Roger, yeah. we come up with an idea. Yeah. Somebody would start. We What's talk. What's a chord? We talk. Yeah. We need to write this song today. You know what we need to, we talk for a few minutes up, up top. That's what we need to write today. I was like, that's the thing. You know what I was thinking about? I slept last night and I thought this, let's do this. And Giddy would start playing something on the guitar. Roger would start on the, you know, he has his like wall of like 12 keyboards and he just goes over to them like a mad scientist and starts playing. You know, Angel gets out his drum machine once he, Roger would kind of like do it first. He'd kind of lay down the foundation and I'd be like, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. right there, right there. And he'd go with that. Okay, let me, let me play that one more time. Play it one more time, loop it, do it. Giddy, blah, blah, blah. Giddy's like, we should call this, you know, this, <laughs> this song. Blah, blah. And then get on the mic, Ink would get on the mic and start playing with melodies and doing that and we'd stop and then we'd write the words together and that's how we made every song, right there in the room. And then you finish the day, and this is the maddest thing, right? When you uh. do it like that, you listen back to it in the car, because you never leave without a monitor mix. <laughs> so I don't care if it's totally not mixed, true. you're giving me something. It's totally right? It doesn't stay in the room. Give it to me, send it Give to it, me right, right now. Right now, yeah. right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Text it to me, I'm not leaving to. until you send right. me the QuickTime file right now. Every time. Get in the car. I'm annoying that way. Pr Every artist is. <laughs> Why would you leave without the music? What, are you crazy? I know. So then you get in the car and you press play on it, and you listen to it. And the times I've been in the room when I've seen that happen will be a part of that moment when you didn't have a session or a beat or whatever, mm -hmm. it just pours out. Yep. You are having the first, first impression. Yeah. You are having, the, the first time you hear it is how everyone's going to hear it. And you get to be a fan once and only once of what you did. Yeah. And after that, the analysis begins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because I remember I would like take it is the most incredible feeling like this didn't exist this morning yeah i get to be a fan this doesn't exist this morning and i would take it and i would let i'd be like he'd like what did you do today i was like we wrote this he's this like you ben. wrote this today this is ben yeah and then you have to play it to him yeah it's about you and <laughs> again again every day he's like not again <laughs> i thought we got this out of our system 20 <laughs> years ago nope <laughs> we sure didn't we got so much more to say it was brilliant. and it was working experience I've ever had. I didn't, you could not get me out of that studio. If I, you know, back then when I made that album 20 years ago, I didn't have kids. Yeah. So I could be in the studio all night if I wanted to. Yeah. I remember myself, you know, really loving it or whatever, but then going home at three, four in the morning. Now I can't do that. You know what I mean? At a certain point, I was like, I gotta run upstairs and put the kids back. Put the, the kids back, da, da, da. you got your stuff for tomorrow? You did your homework? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, back down. I gotta go have dinner with kids, <laughs> you know? And so it was like that, but when I, I just didn't want to leave the studio. I didn't want to leave. It was, we had so 
much creative, loving energy in it that it was just the most beautiful place to be. It was like taking all the love that I have uh, in my heart for this person and what I want to say and then putting it in the room and then adding music on top of it, which I love probably more than any other thing besides that. Right. And though the combination of that was just so explosive for me. Because you got it back. Because you got it back. Also. You got it back. It had been so long. In your life, you got it back. And I mean, that's why you do the work. Yeah. It's got to amount to something. It's got to. You, and, and there are times where you were like, What's, where's it it's going? It's not going to. Yeah. I'm just going to keep the faith. It's going to be okay one day. Yeah. It's going to feel better than this. Yeah. And sometimes you really get to that point. And me and my husband talk about this. It's like that point where you just almost give up. You're like, Man. But something inside you. Let the little, little spark, the little, little, tiny, little piece of flame that's still there won't let you give up. And you don't. And you can't. You can't. You hear me? You can't. You have to keep going. You gonna tour this time? Without a doubt. I'm either gonna tour or go to a residency. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create this show. Yeah. I will create You gonna put them together? Show. Yeah. They have to. Because the first album is lonely. It needs a tour. <laughs> Yeah, that this is me the, now and the, then tour. The first album is like, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Now and then tour, we should call it. Right. I we just did it. That's it. It's done. Listen, I never know what's going to happen. I don't want to go away too much right now. I want to be home. But you don't have, by the way, you don't have to put 300. You no, don't have to, I know. You don't have to do the one laminate that just has world tour on it. I mean, that's like, no. that's like old school shit. So old school. Well, when I did the It's My Party tour. Yeah. Um, 2020 yeah. with Hustlers and with the Super Bowl and with all that, that yeah, year yeah. that was so amazing. Yeah. This My Party Tour was 38 shows across the United States and like, I think seven shows abroad. Yeah. And it was an amazing tour. Yeah. And it really like had that thing and that kind of signature like moment in time. And when you do that special kind of limited experience, people really enjoy it. And it's like, if you miss it, you miss it. You miss it, you miss it. And by the way, <laughs> bring it back whenever you want. And you can bring, you bring it, it back, back whenever, whenever you want. want. That's true. Thank you for welcoming yes, us here today. Absolutely. I just want you to know that um, you just continue to inspire people Thank in you. an amazing way. And you've been so open throughout your life and shared so much with people that, yeah, in a way, we all feel like we do know you. Yeah. But now that I'm getting to know you, I can confirm that it's even better <laughs> in real life. Thank you. I can't wait for you to hear the record. I can't wait either. <laughs>